Scene one, Apple, take one. I'm Shane Borza, part of the AOF Film Festival, and I'm here with stunt legend and friend Igor Breckenback. I wanted to ask you, how did you get involved with AOF? Well, the connection between Action and Film Festival and myself goes a long way back. I found out a little bit later that Action Film Festival got founded at the same time that I founded my production company, which was Breckenback Films. And when we produced our first feature film, good luck with that, we tried to premiere it at the Action Film Festival. And so that was quite a few years later. That was probably a good three years later, around 2007. So the first festival we went to, with good luck with that, and probably the best festival we went to was Action Film Festival. Because at that time, our, our story in Good Luck With That is entirely told to stunts. So there wasn't many festivals that were featuring action on film. And action on film being one of those major ones and big ones at the time, we knew that that's where we wanted to premiere our film, and that's how we ended up with the Action Film Festival. Mr. Breaking Back, listen to me very, very carefully. I will not be repeating myself. If you ever want to see your wife again, you'll have to get a few items for me. Now, do not get distracted. I will be watching your every single move. Breaking back. You might even enjoy this next task. Just get the stone. Who's breaking back? What are you doing cleaning my windows? Your windows are dirty. Very dirty. <laughs> Huston's doing rather well with his tasks. But I still think he'll get distracted. That would be such a shame, since you seem to think you two are such a perfect match. No time to play. Now this is all coming towards its either very sweet or very bitter end. Fun fact for me was going to Australia is where I met you and I did my senior film which one of the actors in the film recommended oh when you go back to LA put it in AOF and then that's how I met Dale Weston and now that's how I became involved with AOF so there's this cool kind of cycle between like Australia the US AOF Breaking Back Films and all that because you were the stunt creator on that movie that I did that's correct yeah so when we met in Australia, so you were shooting a, a short film, I believe, um, and um, that's how we met. Um, you invited me to do some stunts and help out on some of the scenes. And then we got talking and found that obviously we had a lot in common. That we liked action and we liked um, uh, challenging scripts and that we really enjoyed in shooting independent films um, too, because, um, uh, you know, it's hard to get funding when you start your company. That's that's a given, um, but that shouldn't stop you from making films. And so we were kind of on the same page with that. And so it was good to have a, a kindred spirit that that was happy to come along and you know give it a go, whatever we were doing at the time. And then you seeing obviously good luck with that. That kind of showed you how we work and how happy we were to do a lot of independent stuff with on, on shoestring budgets. And then yeah, we ended up making a film together. <laughs>
What's wrong with you? don't know there is uh my directorial debut which again it was due to igor believing in me and the collaboration and the friendship we built up over all these because we were working on commercials and stuff reels and all kinds of stuff uh, so we ended up making a feature shot in australia called turbines so why don't you talk a little bit about that and then what's been going on with that in the last couple of years i remember us doing a few things and then you telling me that you had to go back to the u.s and i really wanted to make uh, the next feature with Breaking Bad Films. And I said I had an idea, and there were a few pages there, not, not an entire script. Um, and, but I said the synopsis was there, the idea was there, and uh, um, it, it was related to turbines, and it was meant to be a horror thriller. And then we kind of started talking, and uh, we started throwing ideas together, and I said, well, look, there's a few months left until you have to go back. Why don't we just use that time? Why don't we just try and shoot this film while you're here? And, and we just, you know, there, there was another film we had to do before that. And so we said, why don't we just, you know, you sit down, we'll throw ideas together, you write it out and, you know, we use what I already had and we mash it all up and we see what we can come up with. And what we came up with was the script for Turbines, right? Yeah, it was a real magical time. I ended up, uh, I, I was just uh, relaying this story earlier. I said, you know, I, I kind of abandoned film school like a month early and ended up doing three feature films back to back. And one of them, so where we're making the first feature, we were discussing making turbines. And then when we were making the second feature, I was writing turbines. That's right. And then we wrapped the second feature and then we went right into production and did the third one. Yeah. And I think it was like two days after we wrapped and I had to go to the airport and leave because my visa was so <laughs> yeah. so yeah. It, to go. But it all yeah. ended up working yeah. out. Yeah, we had everything in the can basically. The, most of the film was in the can. And then yes, it was a long road after that because the film only got released in 2019, November 2019 we released. Um, but it, it was, yeah, seven years in the making in post-production for various reasons. A, funding, B, I had kids, uh, C, um, technology moved on, so we had to constantly upgrade what we were delivering to try and get some kind of distribution happening. And then the good thing was is we managed getting a lot of pickup shots um, and, and, and you know they, they ended up in the film as well, which really I think enhanced the film, um, especially when you have a film on a shoestring budget, anything that can enhance the film will help it later down the track. But I think regardless of all that, I think what we nailed I think was the chemistry and the idea of the film and that it was something different, that it was a different story that uh, something I don't think, you know, we have seen. Um, and I think it was very worthwhile giving it a go and sh shooting it that way. As well as we went to um, basically a place which is just outside of Canberra. So whoever, whoever knows Australia, just down here, just outside of Canberra. Uh, we went from Sydney, which is where I live and where, where Breaking Bad Films is. Uh, we, moved, we went down to Canberra and just before Canberra, uh, there was a little town where we organized a house from one of our friends and that was basically our, uh, everything there was the yeah. there was the location there the was production the office production and office everything. and there, yeah. there was everything and so uh, we all jammed in there we we had a few people helping us out with camera and sound and um, and uh, Warren who's on our team um, he was down from Canberra so he was a humongous help to get even more hands on deck and 
obviously he was very versatile in, in filmmaking because he had quite a few uh, years experience as well. So he was helpful in all departments if it was stunts so or the acting side of things, he ended up doing a part in the film. Mm -hmm. Or I said then working behind the scenes as well. And so I think the good thing was is that everybody had quite a bit of experience in different departments. And so, and then obviously we had some green crew as well, people that never worked on a film before. So I think that mix always tends to produce something, something great. I felt like there was a lot of synergy and things came together very organically. We had to be flexible, we had to move fast sometimes, but it taught me on the fly, like everything I'd learned in those two years of film school and then putting into those three features back to back, but especially ours where we were kind of like, okay, we're gonna do this, this, and this. And then because like you said, there was a couple like more experienced people, they could just kind of come in and, and even though you did have some green people, they could kind of go, okay, here's how we're gonna do yeah. this. And uh, that's the, one of the things I remember is one of, one of the more experienced people will come in and kind of streamline like, okay, here's the plan. And then the plan will happen. And we're like, oh, it kind of went exactly. exactly. Yeah. Because once you have the experience, you can kind yeah. of go in and say, we, we, I know how to do it. We didn't have the budget. So we didn't have, you know, the cameras we wanted, the sound we wanted. There, there are shortfalls on the technical side of things. But I think on the skill set side of things, we were up. That, that kind of balanced us a little bit. Um, as well as, you know, people always talk about 14, 16, 18 hour shooting days, uh, but that's usually, you know, a lot of resetting camera to then actually shoot. I think in our case, we almost actually shot 14 hour days because we had uh, three, four cameras going at the same time. Um, and so we were always shooting something. If we were not shooting the, the scene, we were shooting some pickups or, or you know, some, some whatever there was on the day. We were just trying yeah. to get as many shots as we can. And I remember I was also going through the script between the shots Well, uh, you know, Bianca, our lead actress, while she was doing the makeup or whatever, I remember I was going, oh, okay, we can't do this, let's scratch it. We can't do this, let's scratch it. Oh, oh, we can do this. Oh, why don't we introduce that? And I remember I was like putting little things in. Oh, you know, if you just turn the camera around, we can still get this shot and it'll still make sense in the script. So we're like, let's yeah. do this, right? <laughs> well, again, that really shows when, when you really experience people that know what they want, is it, I, that's one of the things you taught me on set. It's like, they're, it's, it's not yes or no, it's, well, how can we? Yeah, how can you we? Know? And so if you go in with that openness, then quite often you get some awesome things. So before we go, I want to ask you, because of course this is AOF, so what is a particular action sequence or stunt or something for like fights in action, martial arts style, AOF, you know, audience that stands out particularly from the Turbines uh, film or production? So the, the tricky thing was, yes, when we shot Turbines and, you know, me having a little bit of, of um, um, a, a fan base, um, in the industry, but predominantly on the stunt side of things, I think a lot of people expected for the next film that came from Breaking Back Films that it's also gonna be predominantly, you know, there's gonna be predominantly stunts in it and there's gonna be a lot of action in it. And I think a lot of people were surprised when it ended up being a horror thriller with some action in it. The, the, the positive comments we received after the premiere and obviously after quite a few people have seen the film is, one was the, the hammer cam. I think yes. that, 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 that. I remember putting that together. Yeah. yeah, the hammer cam, I think that's, and I don't want to give too much away, but you know, whoever is watching the film, um, yeah, you know, the hammer cam, you might like it or you might not. Most people seem to have enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, and, and it, as much as that is a stunt, but it's also like a practical effect, right? Yeah. But it, it was shot for real. So we will have, let's say that. So it was shot for real. So it is a real hammer and it's a real person. So, but it is a practical and, and, and some, somewhat stunned effect and, and interesting camera work, I, I would like to think. Yeah. That, that was one thing. Uh, the other thing in turbines, you know, talking around stunts is that I really wanted the stunts to feel very, very natural because it did involve violence and it did involve obviously some, some blood, but I, I really wanted yeah, the stunts to be different and to feel very real. And so when we're using, you know, tools or uh, other things that we used in the film, I, I just wanted to make sure that that it doesn't feel like it was a film. Mm -hmm. Because our Turbines does have, and you know, again, you know the film just as much as I do, but Turbines has a, a, a real feel to it. And it's kind of shot in, in real time, or the way we edited it is kind of has a feel of real time, mm -hmm. which in today's, you know, days and day and age where everybody is on their socials and every two seconds they're looking at something else that might not be necessarily instantly appealing, but there's you know many movies as we know in, in, in film history where they, they are kind of presented themselves in, in real time and they're uh, interesting because of it. 
because we are really experiencing everything as it's happening and we're not suddenly cutting something out and moving basically to the next scene so there is parts in the film that you just you're just following uh, our our couple there uh, in real time and then we're following Attila um, you know on his journey and what he's doing also in real time a lot and it's a big part of the film it's because it, the film is about isolation and about many other things but it starts with isolation they're being isolated near a turbine farm and him having to do a groundhog day job yeah day in day out so it was important to to show that if we sh if we've shown that with like you know one second cuts i don't think it would do it yeah i think the impact comes from the pacing and showing like oh i'm kind of feeling a little bit of what he's going through because it's almost like uncomfortable and you just are slowly kind of ratcheting that up and that that was what i like to think of as the the idea I had was like, oh, let's not make a straight out horror film. Let's make it more of a thriller. So you do have kind of that slow burn thing where it, it makes the audience feel a little uneasy in the chair as, as it's going on. And things start slowly going. I don't want to give it away either, but like things start yeah. slowly kind of going. But you, you know, that's that thing you watch as an audience and you're like, is this crazy? We wish we were leaving or is it okay? And we, you know, you start justifying and explaining it away. And then at some point you're at the point in a return like, oh, now, now we're locked in here. Another comment was, yeah, that, you know, it does it builds and builds and builds and i think that's why then when the stunts kick in and when some of the violence kicks in it has a lot more impact mm -hmm. like you remember when we first met even back then when when we kind of started with breaking bread films it, like the, the big difference i thought was the way we were approaching stunts because old school was a lot of times action for action's sake mm -hmm. and then you know um what, what we wanted is to kind of like the action to justify the drama and vice versa. So it was really important that the action is supporting the drama and it's not taking it out of it and vice versa that the drama is supporting the action. So you've got to find the scenes that kind of link into each other and complement each other and, and you don't feel like, oh, he was the drama director doing his thing and then suddenly the stunt coordinator kicked in and now the action is happening. And I mean, you need to find, as I said, your action within drama and vice versa. And, and, and what I really like the way turbines turned out is that there is those moments where we have so the big build up the lead up there's quite a bit of drama and so when then the action does happen when it does kick in it has a serious impact mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and i've seen it i've seen it in the audience and uh if you know if you guys go on the website you there's audience reactions on the website you will see it there right so um we, we even when we screened the first few scenes so we did a fundraiser midway through the film where we were showing the first few scenes to a selected audience even then, just the first few scenes, um, we've seen instant audience reaction to that slow build up and then a, a, a sudden kind of action happening, but action combined with, you know, a little bit of horror and thriller. Well, you, <laughs> me you mentioned the film, you mentioned the website. So where can everyone go to see more of what you're doing and see Turbines in particular? Obviously, everybody can go onto the, our production company's website, which is breakingback.com. Um, you can also go, there's various links there on breakingback.com that will lead you to the Turbines film, but you can also check the Turbines film out via Vimeo. So if you go Vimeo on demand, Turbines, but we're also on, on Amazon Prime, <laughs> US, Amazon Prime, UK, and there's plenty of other sites the Turbines can be checked out. But probably the, you know, the fastest way to get there is via our website, breakingback.com. Well, I'm so glad that you found AOF so years later I could find AOF so years later we could reconnect after not Please, seeing each yeah. other for almost yeah. 10 years. Yeah. And we have all those uh, movies that have happened already and I dare say there will be more in the future. So. Well, let, let's not forget, when I went to AOF and, and, and showed luck with that, we were in LA, right? Mm. 
and you are from LA, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then ten years. we are here now in Las Vegas, where yes. AOF is now. And yeah. you moved to Las Vegas, and so it happened to be that um, I was here with some other commitments. <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, so you're in Las Vegas, and here, here I am in Las Vegas as well. So it's pretty interesting, I think. It, it, it's funny how it all comes around, but uh, as people who go to AOF will know, we talk about it as it's not the AOF festival so much as it's the AOF family. And quite often, like I make plenty of connections and friendships that have built up over the years. People come back every year like, hey, I haven't seen you since last year's film festival, you know? And uh, this is just another one of those kind of crazy threads that have maintained the friendship after all. Yeah, so, almost 10 years later, like we were constantly talking because we were constantly talking about turbines too, right? And then yes. finally, when you said, hey, I'm involved now with the Action Film Festival, I'm like, whoa. Whoa, hold on. <laughs> yeah, we're <full> circle. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm uh, psyched to have a little more story. Like, I didn't know you both founded the same year, for instance, and I've yeah. known you for how long, you know? So it just goes to show there's there's lots of cool stories out there, and hopefully we'll get to see all your stories at uh, AOF either this year or in the future. So check out Breaking Back Films, check out Turbines, and check out the Action on Film Festival. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the show, please click on the link below. You can also contact me at my website if you have any questions about filmmaking or anything else. Off to the side, you'll see a couple of my books, Film Notes and the Film Notes Workbook. I encourage you to check those out if you'd like to learn more about filmmaking. See you in the next episode. Scene one, Apple, take one.